This is the first one that I smelt from your collection. This is the first one that I bought off you. And yeah, I knocked it up within about a week. You did this in a week? Yeah. And uh, you created this fragrance in a week? Maybe even less. Welcome back everyone, Marcelo is my name. I'm the niche fragrance collector. This awesome man next to me is Ali. How do you say your surname? Uh, Kelly. <laughs> I was saying, did you hear me? Uh, Kelly, yeah. Er, er Kelly. I was giving it an Italian sort of vibe. And that's why I said in the video, yeah. I said, uh, he's a Turkish man. Like it was my disclaimer. I'm like, I don't think I'm saying that right. You know? So how do you say it again? Er Kekli. Er Kekli. Kekli okay. Yeah. This is Ali Er Kekli. Not Er Kelly. Erkeli was the ancestors back in the Renaissance. Yeah, probably. Yeah, in Florence. <laughs> then they moved to Turkey and they changed it to Erkeli. Today we're going to talk about Rose Bandit. Now, Ishmael Effendi. Who is this guy? Ishmael. Oh my gosh. See? It, but it's the same name. I tell people. It's the same name. Never trust anything. When it comes to words, I just get creative. You know? It's the creativity in me. You know? It's not actually wrong, but yeah, it's just different. So who is Ishmael Effendi? He's a man uh, that was living in Turkey um, in the late period of the Ottoman Empire, late 1800s, and he loved roses so much. While he was, I think he was on uh, army duty or something like that in Bulgaria, he pretty much lifted uh, one of the rose saplings. So lifted meaning stealing. He wasn't actually physically he lifted. <laughs> he lifted. <laughs> That's an Aussie way of saying we stole. Uh, smuggled it back to Turkey in his cane. Where he's from, it's uh, called Isparta. And that is now known as the rose capital of Turkey. Because that's all on the label. Have a look at the label. You've got all these pieces with the, the image of Ismail, with the image of the rose, with Esparta. I always wondered what Esparta was. It's the region in South. Western Turkey. Okay. Turkey so this was your rose. tribute to him? Yes. And a tribute to the rose, I guess. The rose. And um, uh, one of the rose oils that I do use uh, is actually from that region. Oh, so cool. So cool. It, you know, can I spray? Absolutely. So this is, so I'm going to spray on skin today. Right here, please. Right oh, I'm going to let the master do it. Boom. What's the first thing that hits you with it? You know, you know the funny thing is, I'm getting a very fruity rose, but believe it or not, I actually got like a peppery sort of scent to them. I don't know whether that's... That's you... probably the saffron. Okay, right. Which is spicy. Carnation is spicy. See, I don't know what carnation smells like in, okay. in, in a flower. And the fruity vibe that you're picking, it's probably the raspberry. Yeah. The, yeah. There are fragrances that have a raspberry note in the, in the construction, and I can detect that quite easily. Whereas here... It's berry-like. It's not a raspberry, which yes. are, which is what I like. It's not. It doesn't say very distinctly. It, yeah. I'm raspberry. It's a berry-like component to it. You know what I love about this is, so there are some men who are reluctant to wear uh, a rose fragrance or floral fragrances they, because they feel that it's deemed a little bit more feminine. Also, rose does have a little bit of a bad rap because the rose note has been around for a long time they, I guess, associate it to old people or something like that. Or that it's been done to death. Or that it's been done to death. This is unique. It, it has rose, but it's not a rose fragrance. And I, I don't know whether you want to hear that, but that's how I'm feeling on it. Okay. So it's rose, but it's not an overtly rose fragrance. There's a lot of the other components that are happening in here, which just does this beautiful, this beautiful dance. But it is a, if you want to box it up real quickly, it is a fruity rose floral style fragrance. It's got three different roses in it. To me, it's dominantly rose, but yeah, to each nose, it's quite different. And that's what I like about it. Um, and even the top note, oregano. So actually, I think that's it's what a good is. talking point. I think that's what. So let's break down these notes. Top notes are oregano, rose, and musk. Heart notes are raspberry, damask rose absolute, rose otto, saffron. Narcissus, Carnation, Lavender, and Patchouli. And the base notes are Benzoin, Ambergris, and Himalayan Cedar. Because the funny thing is, I said that there was a black pepper component to it. It's the oregano. I've never, I've never detected it previously. Okay. 
and I think it was there was some kind of is it spice get, or yeah, some kind of yeah, bit, yeah or like a bitterness at the at the opening That's, which I'd never which I never detected earlier. Oh, okay. Only on, but I never put three sprays on. Just so you know, ah, I always put two sprays: one right. on my my chest here, and my stomach, and then my arm. Whereas three concentrated sprays, it really that really popped. Pops, yeah. Just it gives it a different dimension to begin it with. It does. Yeah. So I'm saying that I don't feel it's an overtly rose floral fragrance. Ali disagreed. In reading the notes, it has rose in the top, rose in the heart. So it does have really, I mean, technically, it has quite a bit of rose in it. Yeah, but it, what you're picking up is probably because it's being tempered by the spiciness right. and the herbaceousness, yeah. And the fruitiness. The fruity, yeah. I wanted to have a bit of an eclectic ensemble, so I, I think it works really well. From a storytelling point of view, Ismail was something that was exciting to sort of base it on. But did you start first with thinking... I really like this guy, I like what he did, or did you go, I want to create a rose fragrance? When I did read his story, I just felt compelled to story tell with, uh, yeah, with the fragrance construction. And uh, yeah, I just had to, had to do what wasn't even slated to be made. And yeah, I knocked it up within about a week. You did this in a week? Yeah. And, uh, you created this fragrance in a week? Maybe even less. And I, I normally have different uh, ways to... Uh, like different priorities like um, stuff that's in development whereas this once I uh, did hear the story or read the story I just uh, fast-tracked it had to had to make it I don't know how you constructed this in a week <laughs> I hear stories that fragrances take like nine months and they take you know there's such a process such a you know like the, the perfumer has to suffer to make and you and you pop this baby out in the in a week yeah uh one of them i think it was ab absent-minded i knocked it up in about an hour but december <laughs> took me about two years oh wow <laughs> december december okay because december is beautiful wait till we, we talk about that one so you it took, <laughs> took you a week man you got to create more mystery on this i mean you're gonna <laughs> no this took me years I suffered for my art, you know. <laughs> I was on my knees, crawling to get... No, a week. Now I can do it in a week. How did you become a perfumer? Uh, by chance, really. Because you're not... If I'm correct in saying, you're, you're not sort of um, classically trained. Not at all, yeah. So, how, so tell me more about this. Uh, can, can we just stop for a sec? Sure. I'm not exactly uh, sure about how I'm going to approach this okay. because you're leading me into... No, I'm not going to talk oh, about... Because no. that's where it started. No, I don't care. You, you, I'm not going to ask you that question. That's voluntary on your oh, part. Oh, okay. I'm not going to... But like I don't I said, know how to answer This is not it. an ambush. No, so, no, no. I know you know. Yeah, I know yeah. you know. For me, this is my interpretation of what you're doing. It's hard. You're following your heart. You, and, and the other thing too is, and this is the same thing with, with filming, okay? Some people have a misconception that you have to do years and years of school and years and years yeah. of this and get a degree and da 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 boom before you can actually roll and do something. True. This is hard. I, I did, I'm not, I never went to school. One day, I busted my, my wife's chops so much. It's like, enough. I don't want to hear about this anymore. That you wanting to do filming and do, here's 20 grand. This is a true story. Just go and do your thing. So I did, I started, I grabbed the camera, bada bing, boom, boom, I started filming, it worked, people liked my stuff. 20 years later, here's where That's I am. That's brilliant. You know what I mean? So, you, perfumery comes from your heart. Absolutely. What I love about making perfume is, and in niche perfume, it uh, pretty much ticks all the boxes for me. Like I've always been a visual artist beforehand. Mm. I get to, you know, show off my art, uh, tell a story, pretty much like um, there's a science involved as well, scientific. You've got, it's almost like cooking as well, being a chef. It's Cause all the all those raw ingredients yeah. are, are available to everybody. But how you now... Exactly, and it's multifaceted. I absolutely love being in this industry. Yeah, I was born to do it. Your life goes roundabouts and... Um, mm. Yeah, it comes full circle and 
Yeah, it wouldn't change it for the world. So what do you feel is the most powerful force that you have? So what's your superpower is what I'm asking. Yeah, a lot of it comes from my imagination. Um, some things that probably shouldn't work do work. Right. Especially if you feel it, you know, instinctively. Yeah, it, just, it definitely comes from the heart, as corny as it sounds. And I know that we bandy the word a lot, authenticity, almost to the point where it's now becoming unauthentic. You know what I mean? Like, you have to be authentic. But authenticity, truth, is really where it's at. And when people can feel truth, whether it's, you know, um, whether it's in any form of art, you can feel that truth. Definitely. And, you, and you can feel that you're speaking from your soul and not thinking about how much money am I going to make on this baby. Exactly. Yeah, like I've always adhered to following my heart with this and the rest will follow. I'm very thankful and blessed that uh, the world's responding to it. Uh, glowing feedback that I'm getting is incredible. It's really buoying. Yeah, I love it. You're talented, mate. Very good fragrances. I don't, I'm, I'm gonna, I don't want to make him feel uncomfortable. I would strongly recommend men, women, it's going to be easy in the sense that you're already comfortable with floral in your fragrance. Men, we tend to be a little bit more sort of cautious. The Rose Bandit. Have a look at the Rose Bandit. It's something that is quite unique. There are, it's a beautiful balance between being a rose, floral fragrance, but also having those other components that a man can comfortably wear and not feel overtly feminine. All right, so not feel like you're wearing a female perfume, you see? Definitely. Beautiful, beautiful fragrance. This is the first one that I smelt from your collection. This is the first one that I bought off you. Okay. And this is the one that I, it was, this moment I sprayed, I'm like, I was there. I'm like, yes, I love it. It's, I, I've described it before as effervescent. It does have a sparkle to it. Yeah. Which is what I love. Great longevity, beautiful sillage, great presence, awesome fragrance. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. We'll see you guys all on the next episode.